welcome back to Short Scale Modeling. This is part 3 of the FX109 build. In part 2, I closed up the fuse latch and um, discovered one or two little problems. In part 3, um, I'm carrying on with the build. Um, the carpet monster has taken a big chunk out the, the plane, which I'll get to. So the problems are continuing. So let's jump into this and explain it. So I've managed to get the uh, next part of the curling on over the engine block, the last part. Um, it was a little bit tricky as I said in part 2, but I did get there in the end. There was only a slight modification needed in the end, nothing major, it was just a tiny little trim to get it to fit. Next is the cover for the machine gun and magazine, that just uh, pops in there. Now, if you're covering up, there's no need to actually make up the magazine or on the machine gun, because uh, you won't be uh, seeing it. And then the front housing for the machine gun itself, that just slides on without any issue. Next is the front wheels. Take a note of the back wheel, you notice it's on there, everything looks alright. The uh, front wheels just uh, clip in. You may have to trim the um, location point a little bit. If you do, you may have to um, put in a little bit more cement or fillet just to get them to be stable. Um, it depends on well you fitted the uh, housing bracket for them. So they, they just push in, as I say, it's a little bit tight, but uh, just persevere as you're going. Well, somehow I've managed to lose the back wheel. Um, as you saw when I was putting on the front wheels, it was there. When I came to check it, um, the back wheel was gone. And can I find it? No. So obviously this is a major problem, uh, because it just won't look right without its back wheel. So what I've did, done was, was I've taken the um, outer cover of the magazine uh, for the machine gun. They're about roughly the same diameter as the back wheel. Slightly a little bit bigger, but they'll do. Um, taken some modeling clay and rolled it up into a, a little ball and then sandwiched that ball in between the two round parts. Um, you may want to cut off the location pin um, if they be, but then press it down and that will ooze out into the shape roughly of a tyre. Now it will be a lot larger than you need it to be, but um, once it's dry you can sand it down to uh, a size that you require. It's a bit of a stopgap measure. Um, I will try and find a way of to, for it to fit, but for now this will do. So while it's drying I'll go into the rear wings. Now there's a little pin that um, fits into the uh, rear wing here to help them um, go together. I snapped it a little bit, so um, the um, best course of action here was to replace it entirely with a cocktail stick. So um, I'm just checking for fit. You say I've placed one in each um, wing. You don't actually need this, you only need the one uh, pin uh, for it to connect. Uh, but I, I put in two just to see um, how, how it would look and whether I would just trim them down to fit. But one's ne only necessary. I'm using Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey here. And this is going to be for the detailing of the exhaust uh, ports. The, just need a, a thin brush here to paint along it. Don't paint the house and just the inner part of it. Then it's time to place in the wings. Uh, the, the wing route should fit in uh, without any problem. You may have to open up the recess a little bit, um, depending, but um, I, I didn't have too much trouble here. It just slid in quite well. You may have to put a little bit of pressure on uh, to close up any gaps. So it's back to the wheel. Now that wheel is dried, it's uh, time to sand it down. So I'm, I'm just going to be taking any excess off, gently sanding it. I don't want to um, sand it too hard with a rough sander because uh, it will chip, tend to chip away the actual dry clay. And once I was happy with it, I painted it in life colour UA733 black rubber shade tire black and that's down to fit the rear wings uh, just looking them up slightly off camera that's just because of the angle I had to hold it. Um, it they do fit in well again you may need to exert a little bit of pressure on them but if your pin's long enough it should stick out the other end and that should go into the um, opposite wing 
as you push it in. So it is now on to the furniture on the underside, just putting in aerofoils uh, and so forth. There's only a couple of them to put in, uh, nothing major going on there. So they shouldn't give you any problem whatsoever. The um, location points for these are clearly marked. And now it's time to put on the uh, made up wheel. It's not 100% brilliant, um, it is a fraction uh, larger than it should be, but it will. As I said, it will do for now, and um, it is a, it's an okay stopgap. It's to go of the two beacon lights uh, on the tip of the wing, the little player parts that just fit inside the, the recess on the wing. And once that's done, it's time to paint the rest of the uh, underside of the aircraft in my colours of light blue 85% and silver 15%. And once the underside was painted, it was time to paint the um, other little bits and pieces on the underside. Uh, so the main bodies were painted in Rebel Alcor 57 grey and the um, little probes and so forth were painted in Rebel Alcor 90 silver. And it's flipping over onto the side and there's a couple of little pieces I have to put onto the side. So these are, I think, some sort of exhaust or air intake uh, vents. Um, this one is in two parts. There's um, the front part and the back part. The back part will be painted in the main hull colour and the front part obviously in the yellow colour. So it's back to the location lights and the paint is X27 clear red and the opposite one will be X25 clear green uh, by Tamiya. Depending on what variant you're doing, there's a little cradle that has to be made up uh, which will sit inside the canopy on the uh, back of the uh, pilot seat. But then it's uh, now time to paint the canopy and um, if you watched any of my videos before you know I do this freehand so I'm painting this in Rebel Aqua Color 361 Olive Green and the trick here is uh, get a nice um, medium to small size brush with a good point on it and uh, load up the paint but not by too much and then just use one motion to paint uh, over your line now if you do go over the desired area, just take a cocktail stick and uh, rub off any excess paint. It really does work and it will just come off without any problem. Now for this cradle, um, it's meant to go inside the canopy before attaching it, but I found it was easier to attach it uh, to the actual back of the seat before um, uh, attaching the um, canopy. It just made it slightly easier. All it means is I had to hold it in position for a, a minute uh, and until it was strong enough to hold up on its own. So it's back to the canopy painting and as you can see there just one slow motion uh, from the bit the start point to the end point. It's uh, best if you paint it in stages as well, let each part dry before you move on. I'm fitting the area on up to the back part of the um, canopy as the um, antenna that holds the um, wire that is going to run down to the tail. It's best to fit it now um, so you're not putting undue pressure onto the canopy once it's uh, attached. And try to fit your canopy before you put it on, especially if it's um, more than one piece, just to make sure you know exactly where it's going to fit. So what I've done here is I've put in the back piece but I've not actually um, glued it in position. The middle part I am gluing in position. Um, because I found it was easier to place on the middle part first before the two ends. So the back part just acted as a guide and then it was on with the front and lastly the rear part of the canopy. I always check it for fit as well because you never know you may have pushed out a, a little bit. Now it's time for a, a, a coat of pledge clear polish or varnish uh, before I put the decals on. So it's time for the decals, as you see I'm fast forward this bit. Um, they're put on the normal way, warm water, then um, some uh, decal sealing uh, then placed on. There was no problems whatsoever with the decals, they went on very nicely. So once the decals are on and dried, I shall give it another coat of clear varnish before I go to the weathering. On to the weathering now, and I'm using Tamiya's Series B Withering Master and I'm going to be using the suit component here and I've got a brush sharpener and I'm just flicking on the, the markings um, I'm pressing down on the brush and then 
flicking it up, um, decreasing the pressure as I go. Um, that, that's how I do my um, debris marking for um, uh, a plane when it's been used. And I just carry that along uh, uh, around the plane, um, marking where areas where I see a lot of use. So, for instance, the machine gun uh, ports there, um, that's getting heavily weathered, the exhaust vents, and uh, so on. Like all these things, it's uh, the interpretation of, of the builder. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. Just do what you feel is right. All that's left to do now is the um, aerial. So I am here. I'm using Easy's uh, spider wire, which is a six pound uh, wire. This, this is totally used for fishing bits. A nice stretchy wire, uh, which is excellent for um, putting in uh, aerials for planes. So it's just a little dot of super glue on the pylon here. And then what I do is I put the uh, wire on and uh, just hold it a second until um, it sets. I then do the same for the opposite end for the um, on the uh, tail. And then once it sets I just uh, snip off the uh, any excess, either use a knife or a pair of scissors. And uh, once that's all done I repaint it with the fuselage colour and uh, the wire uh, just on the connection points. And that will be the model done. Well that brings the build to an end now. Um, what can I say about this? It, it was a little bit uh, difficult build, um, mainly because of the, the fitting issues. I've been thinking about this and I think it was mainly because of the engine block. I got a suspicion I didn't fit it properly and that's why I had these uh, issues at the front of the fuselage. But either way, I I sorted out the problem and it turned into be a nice looking uh, kit uh, model. Coming up is the reveal video, a uh, selection of photographs and a uh, short video. So I'd recommend this kit for intermediate builders as well as um, experts. A, diff um, a beginner of me find it a little bit difficult to do um, just because of the fitting issues. So if you enjoyed this build why don't you uh, check out the channel and uh, see the other builds that I've done. If you subscribe to the channel, you'll uh, get to see my future builds. Hit that like button and of course leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.